Welcome back, World Explorers. Miss Stephanie here to talk about Asia. This is Asia. The population of Asia is more than 4 billion people. Yes, that's 4 billion. That's a bunch. Asia also has 48 countries. Russia is not only the largest country in Asia, but it's the largest country in the world. This is Russia. The smallest country in Asia is the Maldives. The Maldives is a group of islands in the Indian Ocean. And they are down here somewhere. <laughs> Hundreds of languages are spoken in Asia. For example, India alone has 30 official languages. And Indonesia has 12, with many more spoken among families at home. English, Arabic, and Mandarin Chinese are most common across the continent. The highest point on Earth is Mount Everest, and that's in Asia in the Himalayan Mountains. Asia is the only continent that shares borders with two other continents, Africa and Europe, and sometimes joins with the third continent, North America, in the winter by ice forming in the Bering Sea up by Alaska. Asia is home to many interesting animals, including the giant panda, the Asian elephant, the tiger, camel, Komodo dragon, and the king cobra. China and India are the two largest countries in the world by population. China is number one with over 1.3 billion people. India is number two with over 1.2 billion. The third largest country in the world, the United States, only has just over 300 million. Okay, so now we're gonna learn a little more about India. This is a map of India. And I'm gonna read you a book about India. Namaskar. That means hi in Marathi. My name is Nisha and I live in India. India is a country in Asia where more than 1 billion people live, including me. India is made up of 29 states. People in different states often speak different languages. This is because India is very big. It's the seventh largest country in the world. More than 700 languages are spoken in India. India is split into four main geographic regions. The north of India is part of the Himalayan mountain range. To the south is the Deccan Plateau, which has many hills and rivers. The region above the plateau is large and flat and is great for growing crops because many rivers run through it. This area has lots of farms. The last region to the west is covered in deserts. India has many big bustling cities. One of the biggest is Mumbai. In Mumbai, you'll find Bollywood, where a lot of movies in India are made. India makes the most movies in the world. Many of them are musicals. Now, I didn't know that. The biggest city in India is Delhi. Within Delhi is our capital, New Delhi, which is home to many beautiful temples and museums. You can find the Lotus Temple there. It is one of the most famous temples in India. Bengaluru is known as the Garden City. It is filled with blooming trees, big parks, and lakes. Kolkata has been home to many of India's great thinkers, artists, writers, and architects over the years. I live 
live near Mumbai in a city called Pune with my mom, dad, and two sisters. I have one older sister and one younger sister. My dad is an airline pilot. He flies people to places all around the world. My mom works for a real estate company. She helps people buy homes and apartments. Each morning I wake up and get dressed. There are many different kinds of clothes in India, like the sari and the kurti. I wear saris to fancy events like weddings. A sari is a long cloth that you wrap around yourself. At home I often wear shorts, but at school I wear a uniform. My older sister usually wears a kurti. A kurti is a long skirt that you wear with pants. After I get dressed, I have breakfast with my mom and sisters. I usually eat idli, which are rice cakes. I dip the idli in a vegetable stew called sambar. Time for school. I take an auto rickshaw to school. An auto rickshaw is a three-wheeled car. I live 10 minutes from school. The auto rickshaw picks up other students along the way. School starts really early at 7, 10 a.m. At my school, there are two shifts, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Different students attend each shift. We have two shifts because there are too many students to have in school at the same time. There are 56 students in my class. Each day we study math, science, history, Marathi, which is a language of our state, and either art, music, or gym. Our first subject is math. We are learning about subtraction. After a math lesson, we practice reading in English and Marathi. In the big cities in India, most students learn English. It's important to learn English because many medicine labels, menus, and signs in India are printed in English. At 10 o'clock, we stop for a snack break. Today we are having flatbread with subizi. Subizi is a dish made from cooked vegetables. Once we finish our snack, we start a history lesson. We are learning about when the British ruled India from 1858 to 1947. British wanted to control India because our country had valuable spices, rice, cotton, teas, and gems. India's resources made Britain very rich. The British built factories and railroads all over India to make and move more goods. But many Indian people were unhappy. Britain made Indians work for little money and fight in their wars. During food shortages in India, Britain did little to help. As time passed, people wanted the British to leave. A man named Mohatma Gandhi began a movement to end British rule in 1919. Gandhi told people to stop attending British schools and to stop working for the British. Gandhi was in prison for a few times, including one right here in Pune. But that didn't stop him. He told the people to make their own food, clothes, and other goods. This way, the British couldn't make money from taxes on the goods that the Indian people bought. It took many years, but Gandhi's ideas worked. In 1945, the British began talking to Gandhi and other leaders about Indian independence. And in 1947, Britain at last gave power back to the Indian people. After science and gym class, it's noon and school is over. I take the auto rickshaw home. I play cricket with my sisters and our friends. Cricket is a very popular sport in India. At six o'clock, I have my hobby class. Hobby classes are outside of school and you can learn all kinds of subjects. My big sister learns a traditional Indian dance. My little sister learns piano. I get to learn speed roller skating. When 
we get home, my sisters and I discuss Diwali. Diwali is a Hindu festival celebrated for five days in October or November and marks the new year in India. On the first day, we clean the house. We light clay lamps, which represent our inner light on the second day. On the third day, we eat yummy food and watch fireworks. We exchange gifts on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, we have a big meal with our uncles. After we talk about Diwali, we eat dinner. Tonight, we're having vegetable curry. Curry is a spicy sauce that you eat over rice. After dinner, our dad gets home from his latest trip. He brought my sisters and me souvenirs. My dad brings me back souvenirs from all of, tri all of his trips. I have things from China and Iceland and the United States too. One day I want to visit all these places just like my dad. Would you like to visit India someday? I would. All right, my world explorers, next stop is South America. So stay tuned. See you next time.